Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, this is true, true application to see all this come together. And uh, I love the theme. I love talking the truth and putting it in an educational context. So uh, I'm enjoying the pocket size too. It forces us to think and be concise and um, be, be exact. So I appreciate that context. So what I was gonna talk about today is uh, uh, where are we? Um, who's a social actor? And what does that mean? So let's, let's, just, let's just dive in and get into it. So my question for you, those who are listening and um, is, are you a social actor? And so what that means, a social actor is equivalent to an advocate, someone who does things with other folks and takes on a role to speak up for others. And so having an advocacy orientation is very much part of being truthful in the educational field. Um, it involves not only changing changes in systems, but also the implementation of how we empower others, how to have empowerment strategies that really um, focus on helping our community, identifying barriers, and then being able to um, learn, be open to learning about what approaches we, we can address um, to address those barriers. The other piece is once we've done that, being able to regroup and evaluate our approaches and see as advocates, what could we do differently or better? Um, so Self-reflection is really important in part of the advocacy um, experience. So I, I want uh, folks to feel like they are an advocate but and a social actor, but to do that, you have to figure out and know What's important for you? What matters for you? I hear a lot of people say to me, I don't know how to advocate. I'm just going to pause. I don't know what to do. And so I'm going to take it back a little bit now and say, if I want you to be a social actor and I want you to advocate, I need for you to really um, uh, spend some time with yourself and figure out what makes you passionate, what keeps you motivated, what gets you excited. And so with that, I think about, you know, who are we? Uh, I feel once you have a better sense of what your passion is and where you are, um, then you can only speak the truth. Then you can only be an advocate. So for, for our time right here, um, I want us to think about ourselves. And when I think about that, I think about an advocacy quilt. So depending on everyone's background, some of you may know about a social justice quilt or maybe even an advocacy quilt. And really what it is, it's something that represents um, us. It's a, it's a symbolic um, uh, object that for many people gets us expressing things about ourselves, about our race or ethnicity. It um, is symbolic in that what, what's important for us in this quilt is what protects us. The quilt is also a sign of what, um, how we feel supported. It also represents things that we can put away or use. So when Dr. Cash is the privilege. So for, for us, I want us today to think about um, your advocacy quilt, because I think if we don't spend time thinking about what's important for us, what we're passionate about, what's truthful for us, we're going to stall. We're going to not be able to be advocates. So let's just do, do one together. Um, I know that um, folks are here uh, watching, observing, but um, when you do listen to this or listen to it now, think about you. What is your quilt made out of? Is it about your race? Would you include anything about your religion in your quilt? What about uh, your age? Is that an important variable for you? Your gender, challenges you've had in your life, how does that play out for you? How might that be a part of who you are? Your abilities, your ethnicity, things that you've experienced that have made you resilient, sexual orientation. So I think about all these pieces here, I'm thinking about um, where we are in our quilt. And I, I don't know if this is a, um, a forum for engagement, uh, but if, if anyone is here listening and wants to participate, we'd love to hear your thoughts on what may be in, in your quilt, just to have that kind of dialogue on a Saturday. Uh, when I think about this quilt, I think about myself as a white woman and how my advocacy, my quilt has evolved over time. And that's part of who we are. And I think if we, if we recognize what's important for us and what defines us, then it can empower us in areas that we can be, um, be advocates for. I don't know if there's anyone here that wants to share what might, might be in their quilt if they were going to make such a quilt. I understand. We're thinking about it. We're pondering that. Absolutely. I've got a couple visuals here of, of some folks who've actually put together quilts about things that are important 
uh, for them and gives you an idea of how powerful this exercise could be. This could be exercise in itself is an um, advocacy exercise where we can get together with others and, and put together our feelings and thoughts and bring them all together as into one piece here. And you can see in many of these pictures, you can, you, um, there's a symbolism, there's not just words, but there's pictures, there's expressions, there's honor, there's people, there's love, there's nature. And I think it's important for us to really spend some time with ourselves before we start going to the action mode. I feel like in the education field, one of the things that prohibits folks from being truthful is jumping too much into action. They haven't spent time with themselves and with others to really think about what is important for them or what they, what they um, can do to, to be advocates. So to be an advocate or a social actor, um, social means you can't do it alone. So we've got to come out of our box and we've got to join with others so that we have a collaboration with those that are around us. Um, once we form partnerships with people that we feel brave with, not just safe, but brave, um, then we need to figure out what's the best way for us to, to be an advocate. People advocate in different ways. Um, so for some, uh, the energy is better spent in a support role of being an advocate where you're on the back end, um, you're doing things that are more supportive on the back end that, that help those who are on the front end. For some, being advocates more of a facilitator. Their gifts are better at facilitating movements and information and activities that we can do to become to, to advocates, to, to advocate. For some, their gift is with planning. Advocacy can be very large in planning what, what are things that we can do. Um, and then for some, the advocacy stance is better when they can actually be the ones carrying it out. So I think for, for us, we need to think about the, our quilt, what's important for us, what matters for us, what, um, what defines us, what makes us um, feel like we can be comfortable and, and, our, and our truthful in who we are, and then thinking about where do our gifts lie and how we can be a social actor. Are we better supporting, are we better facilitating, are we better planning or carrying it out? Some of us may do all of it, but I think if we're going to collaborate and partner, we need to be around folks where this is, this is well balanced. If everyone's carrying out advocacy, I think we might have moments where we stall because there's not anyone there planning. There's no one there supporting the front end and there's no one there facilitating. And like the same could be said of uh, just planning. If we plan for advocacy all day long, then nothing will get carried out. Um, if we don't have support and we're just a show of one, that can be really difficult because we don't have um, um, anyone to support. We're just in a support mode. And I often hear people tell me that's probably where they end up stalling. And for some, you can facilitate and navigate, but there's no end, there's no end piece to that. And so to be a social actor, we have to be around like-minded folks and put ourselves in positions where we know who we are, what's important for us, because only then can you decide what kind of social actor um, um, you, want, you want to be. So I'm hoping that folks are thinking about what may be um, the best social actor for them because being a social actor um, is social justice. And that involves actors who have a sense of um, their own agency, which goes back to that quilt, as well as a sense of social responsibility to be able to have that responsibility toward others and to themselves, society uh, as a whole. So thinking about our quilts, I'm thinking about what type of social actor are we, where our gifts lie, so that can give us, empower us. Um, and so these are the ones I would like for you guys to think about. Went back a little fast there. So keep thinking about that after today. What, what's your best suit for the advocacy? So then having the quilt, no, thinking about who we are, um, thinking about the type of advocacy we're best at, then we can get into the action mode, which helps us really build out this educational truth um, of following, following leaders or being that leader. And so I have some things here that I think are important just to touch base on in our, in our time together. So we have advocacy strategies involved focusing on diversity. Um, I know Dr. Cash spoke a lot about it and David as well, but we have to have this awareness of, of the diversity in our communities. Um, it is critical for us to foster social justice if we're not, in order, to, in order to do that, we must have that awareness. We have to also address um, the real consequences of oppression. Um, when we're discussing social justice in, 
and our communities and school and our offices, any kind of meetings where we're together, we have to, it's important for us to acknowledge, acknowledge the real social and economic, economic disadvantages that oppressed people face in society. Not simply the, psych the psychic harm of the repression, but actually um, the disadvantages, the impact of what's happening. The other piece is we have to understand the mechanisms that um, perpetuate oppress oppression. So that's like an attitudes, behaviors like racism, sexism, ageism, heterism. And we must be able to recognize that some folks are talking from a position of privilege uh, when, we're, when we're some of these aspects here. We also have to recognize the hierarchies. We have to resist these hierarchies that exist in oppression. And we instead have to form strategies that can foster justice with an inclusive mindset. So basically who is being left out? And so challenging and resisting those hierarchies. The other piece uh, that goes with the strategies when we're at this action stage is being able to um, seek to address the social justice, uh, justice on three levels. I think it's really important to break it down these three levels. So one is a personal level of social justice, um, how to address things at a personal level. The next is, let's say, our school institutional level. And the third is more the societal, the, the community uh, levels, um, to actually think about where the social justice are um, mostly uh, having an impact at each of those three levels. So we have our quilt. We're thinking about what kind of social actor we are, the role that we have. We're coming equipped with some strategies. And then um, we're talking about being able to um, plan for the future. So maybe that's one of the folks <clears throat> listening here, the planner, the advocate who's the planner. And so being able to think about our next steps from that point of knowing what um, the strategies are. So, um, definitely we need to have an ongoing work with our quilt. It's an evolving quilt, thinking about what's important for us, how our pieces change, our identity changes, our, um, um, based on like where we are in our life and constantly reevaluating our quilt because that also will shift with this term called parallel process. Um, as we shift in our identity, our advocacy will also shift. And that's part of the truth is being able to have that, allow for that adjustment and how we, and how we, um, function as advocates and not always staying in the same, the same place. So after that quilt, um, we need to have training like we have right now. We have this, this conference today. We have to constantly um, have, give ourselves opportunity to, to participate in training and be open to learning more. Our ego has to be okay to say there's more that I can learn. And so being able to take advantage of that training for us and those in our circle and empowering others who maybe don't see that, um, to take advantage of things that are out there. We continue to need uh, more research as well. We need to foster research and have um, data-driven, be able to make data-driven decisions with um, seeing what is happening out in the community in our fields and at different levels. And so that has to be um, um, continued. For, for me, the folks that are here, they're doctoral students, so they're gonna be doing that research as well. And that's gonna be frontline, cutting edge stuff that we can use to, as a, USC Ross here says to interrogate systems that are that are out there. I have not here yet. The other piece I want to talk about is that for the next step is we have to um, we have to find ways to facilitate understanding how advocacy fits our role within a culturally relevant context. So we have to put on that think about the context in a cultural lens and see what's relevant uh, out there. So we're we're doing our quilt, we're training, we're doing research. We have to be able to advocate within a context that's culturally re relevant. The other piece for these next steps is um, being able to see what kind of uh, groups or committees we can join with. I think it's important for us to understand that um, with, these with these committees, we might have to take on a role as a mentor. But what transcends, and the mentorship is, uh, you could email me, I'll give you some places that you could be a great place to join a committee or be, uh, be a mentor. We need that, mrigio at usc.edu. We need to be able to bring people to the table with us um, so that we uh, empowering, keep powering others and don't just stay in our, in our silo. But what transcends all this is we have to understand with all the things that we're doing to understand the power and the function of advocacy and understand that it's complex. 
It's not, it's not easy and it's not single, it's not black and white. There are complex issues that have to be addressed and we understand the power and the function of how advocacy works, works within those. Um, I will say that me speaking here with you all today, it's a bit different for me because I always have somebody with me. I always bring someone to the table and, uh, and I often don't tell the folks who I'm speaking to that I'm bringing someone to the table, I just bring them. And so today I had someone that was gonna come with me, but something came up and they were not able to come. So this is one of the rare times I'm just actually, these days at least, speaking on my own. And I encourage you all, anytime that you have a platform to speak and talk on, no matter what it is, bring someone with you to that table so that you're not doing it in silo. You're bringing someone who, who's learning, learning this, uh, be social actor too so that they can uh, feel, feel empowered. So, so with that, I'm thinking about us and how we need to keep working on our field. And I'm hoping that I'm, I'm leaving you all with some symbolism, with some homework, and uh, feeling empowered about next steps in, the, the app, in our advocacy world of, of social actors. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Riggio. Uh, you always are able to, uh, impress and, and just bring us to a different uh, uh, level of our thinking. So uh, we really appreciate you making time today. We appreciate you uh, for what you shared. And, uh, you know, I just thank you because, you know, you, you are living what you say. You know, you really do include people. I, I've been invited to several, as well as my classmates, we've been invited to several events that you have opened up doors for. So I just want to say thank you so much for all that you do. And uh, we appreciate you at the Educational Truth Conference. Thank you. It's my honor. <laughs>